Products in this video were provided to the author to do a review. All opinions are 100% authors and authors alone. Hey guys, this is your friend Inky back again. So I'm sure you've seen a bunch of my videos that I do very high-end builds, very expensive builds, but I know not everyone has the cash for those kind of builds. So today's build is going to be a little bit different. So my friend Zach and Jessica, their daughter Angel, she just had her birthday April 13th. I know it's a little bit late, but all the parts just came in and they wanted to build her a machine. They didn't know how to, so I offered my services. Free, of course, she's my friend as well. So the budget build consists of an AMD Ryzen 3 220G processor, a Gigabyte B450M DS3H motherboard, two sticks of Patriot Viper Elite Series DDR4 2400 megahertz, as well as an EVGA 500 watt 80 plus power supply, a Thermaltake Versa H15 SPCC, and then a Kingston 240 gigabyte A400 SSD, even a monitor for that price. And I'll have all that in the uh, description below so you guys can check it out. But it's a ViewSonic VA 2055SA. So come over here real quick and uh, let's get started with the build. I'm pretty excited. So first off, we have the motherboard out. I already unboxed everything for you guys. And then we have here the processor. This is utilizing the Radeon Vega graphics. So we are going to be using onboard graphics or on die graphics. So I'll go ahead and take that out. Be very careful. You don't want to bend any of these pins. Okay. And then you're going to be pushing out and then lifting this bar. You can see that right here. Okay. And then that'll allow you to more easily place that CPU on there. You're going to go ahead and you'll see right over here, there's this gold edge right over here. There's no other gold edge, but right over here. And that's going to match up with this corner right over here on the CPU socket. You'll also notice on the CPU itself, there's those four rectangles. I'm being very careful not to touch anything. Those four rectangles next to the center square, that's going to line up on the motherboard as well here with those four rectangles. So again, here is the gold edge and we just drop that right in there. It may not fall in perfectly at first. You might have to lift it and just match it up with your eyes. Never push down hard, and I don't know if you heard it, but it fell right in there. I'll do it again. Okay, just falls right in. And then you go ahead, push that down, and that lines up the socket there. And then we're going to go ahead and use the fan that comes with the CPU. Okay, now since we're using the CPU fan that it comes with, you'll notice it has these screws right over here, four of those. They're going to go right here, right here, right here, and right here. So we're gonna go ahead and undo them. And I did forget to mention, we are going to be taking off both of those pieces of plastic. Now we're going to go ahead and put in the, the fan. Okay, so I'm just going to put it right over the screw holes. So then I'm gonna screw down this one first and then this one afterwards. So I'm gonna crisscross them and I'm not gonna screw it down all the way, just enough so that it catches some threading. Okay, now that it's caught threading, I'll go ahead and put it all the way down. I'm gonna do it the same way, crisscross. So now we're gonna go ahead and just plug this in. We're going to make it look nicer a little bit later on, but right now it's just to make that connection. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and install the RAM. Okay, so they named this a little bit funny. So this is one, this is three, this is two, and this is four. We're gonna go ahead to put and put the memory in slot one and slot two, those gray slots. So we'll just open that up okay and again the 
Patriot Viper RAM. Let me show you a little bit closer on how to install the RAM properly. Okay, so you'll notice on the RAM slots, there's this little notch right in the center. That's gonna go ahead and line up with the notch right in the center of the RAM. Okay, so if you put in your RAM this way, which might look right at first, if you're just trying to go quick, but you'll notice it doesn't seat in there because those little notches don't match. So you want to make sure you look into that. Okay, and then you just push down. And that's gonna go ahead and lock those sticks of RAM in place. So right over here, you'll notice there's a little notch right over here. And so when this memory, or when this comes up, it locks the memory in place. So we're just gonna go ahead and drop that in again. All right, so, and you saw how that automatically went back in. So simple, right? Great. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and pop the motherboard inside of the case. So one second. Depending on the case you have, some of them might already come with these standoffs already installed. Okay, this particular case doesn't. So what we're going to need to do, notice the holes that are already on there for standoff screws. We're just gonna go ahead and drop that in there and just mentally make note of those holes. Okay, so I can see that we're going to be using, okay, so we're going to be using right here, 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 and here, as well as here. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and drop those in now. Okay, and after you've done that by hand, you're going to go use some needle nose pliers just to make sure they're nice and tight. Here's the case with the standoff screwed in. Now I did mess up on one piece. The standoff, instead of going here, goes right down here, but easy enough to fix. And you can see that easily when you're placing the board inside of the case, you'll count one, two, three, four, five, six, oh, seven, uh, yeah, seven screws, sorry. And if you're missing one, well, you know, you might have one somewhere that might short out the board, so definitely correct that. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and place the IO shield back here. Okay, we just drop it back here, push it through. All right, pretty simple, right? I'm gonna need to lay it down on its side to get a single screw in, and then I'll come right back up. So one quick second. We're going to just kind of drop that board in there. Then we match it up with the IO shield right back here, just making sure that everything comes out properly, okay? I am going to be matching one screw, or using one screw, I should say, just to make sure that the board is screwed in and doesn't fall out. It's a lot easier for me to record this for you guys with the case standing up, so one sec. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and install the SSD. Now in this case, it is a bit different. Uh, you would normally expect maybe to fit the drive in the enclosure right over here where you would put your 3.5 inch drive, but they don't provide any kind of uh, bracket to let that go in there. So the way you have to do it is you have to first off, remove this thumb screw. So I'm just taking that out now. Okay, then you have to remove this thumb screw. It might come that you can do it with your thumb, but it was so difficult, I had to use pliers before. So I'm just taking that out now. So just know you might need needle nose pliers for that. And then you slide the cage out. Okay, and now you would think, oh, maybe you put it down here, but no, it's a little bit awkward. You have to put it right here and then screw it in with these screws up there, right here and right here. So. That is a bit awkward, but I mean, it works. Now you're not going to be able to get through with these 
unless you have a really tiny screwdriver, I don't. But either way, it's an SSD. You don't have to worry too much about that. So one second while I screw that in. Okay, so it's not gonna go anywhere. It's just a bit awkward. And then you would slide the SATA cable and the SATA power cable right up here. So then we're just gonna go ahead and slide that back in there. And you have to be careful, there's a lip right over here. You see there's a little lip right here. So depending on how you put this in, you know, you could probably put it over that lip. So you just need to make sure you're mindful of that lip. And then these two little lips down here, here and here that are going to go over here. So three things you need to look out for there. Okay, and if at first they don't line up right, just match up the screw holes and then they'll line up. Okay, so that's in there. Okay, so you could also put the SSD right here, but I'm just gonna go ahead and keep it right here for now. Just put that one in and this one in. Okay, so now we're just left with the power supply. So this guy right over here. Now this is not a modular power supply. When we were looking, this was the cheapest solution or the most affordable solution. Okay. Okay, so just slide it in. And then we are going to need these screws that came with the power supply. And we'll just screw them in right over here. All right, so now that's installed right down here. Now we're just gonna go ahead and connect everything. We'll start with these cables here. So furthest out is usually front panel audio right down here. So let's go ahead, find that cable. And I'll clean it up off camera. But just to give you an idea on how to build it. Okay, so this guy. Now you wanna make sure, see that little notch right over here? That's going to line up with this little notch down here. And I'm telling you that so that you don't bend a pin by mistake. That hole right there. And then USB, which will go, you can see there's two headers right here, this white one here and this white one here. And and then we have USB 3.0, which is this big one right down here. So now we're going to have to connect the front panel header. Now through silk screen, they have the text for everything for, again, for the HD LED, the power LED, the power switch and the reset switch. It's all silk screened on there, but it's really tiny. So it might help looking in the motherboard manual. This is their motherboard manual for this motherboard. And unfortunately, it doesn't have much of anything. So give me one second while I do this off camera real quick. With that out of the way, uh, we need to connect the ATX 24 pin, which will go right, oh, right over here on the motherboard. You can see that right there. Okay. Really simple. And then we need to connect the 20, the eight pin CPU power right over here. So a lot of times it'll either be a four 
a four plus four or a straight eight. This is a four plus four. And let's see. Okay, I'm just feeling for the notch where this is going to snap in place. All right, so now that's connected, simple enough. Then we're going to have to undo where we screwed in the SSD. And I'm not gonna screw it back in on video, but again, just to show you real quick on how to install that. Okay, so you're going to get one of the SATA power connections and just connect it right over here. So to show you real quick, so this little L looking thing there, gonna match it up right over here. Okay, snaps in pretty easily. And then we're going to connect to one of the SATA ports, which is a mess right now, but that's okay. So just this cable connect it, for example, right over here on the motherboard, and then right over here on the SSD. All right, so I've shown you how to build it, how to put everything together. Oh, and then of course there is one fan and actually I'll show you that afterwards. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and put everything together all nicely and neat off camera and then come back to show you guys the complete project. So one sec. All right guys, so here is the finished build. Again, a little bit difficult because the cables are not modular for the power supply, but see the way I routed the eight pin right down across here. And then the alongside the 24 pin, I kind of hid that in the drive cage a little tiny bit. You could see that here. Okay. And then I routed the power, the, I'm sorry, the USB three front panel audio and USB 2.0 as, as well as the front panel header right across here. They're routed right back here. And I do have the SATA cable and the SATA power running along here as well, kind of sticking out a little bit more than it should. So then all that magic happens right back here. So let me zoom out and bring you a little bit closer. Okay, so taking this guy out of here. Now, don't get scared. A spider might jump out, jump out at you or a rat. All right, so it is a solid panel, so you don't have to worry about it looking pretty or anything. Just, it's sticking up here. Now, I use the regular wire ties for the PCIe cable, just in case you wanted to add a video card later on. And I zip tied the Molex and the SATA power all together. You know, if they want it, they can always take that apart. But, you know, aside from that, it is a pretty, clean build. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys how to install windows on it and then all the drivers and all that good stuff and flashing the BIOS as well. And then afterwards, I'm going to do a little benchmarking and everything and bring it all to you in another video. All right, guys, Iggy up. See you guys. Products in this video were provided to the author to do review. All opinions are 100% authors and authors alone.